hey, hey, it's me with my September and October wrap up and a little bit of a November TBR because, because, because I have not done it yet and I feel badly about that, but you know what? Here it is. Here it is. So, September and October combined, I read eight books, which is okay. I kind of average four to five books a month and so in September I read four and October I read four so they were kind of average months for me. did read some good ones. Uh, I don't think I read any one that I absolutely hated. But I'm going to tell you what I read in case you are interested and you want to know maybe. So I started off September. I finished Incarnate by Jody Meadows. This is the first book in a trilogy, I think. Um, don't quote me on that because I found that when I say books are part of a series or however many there are, I get it wrong. Um, yes. But I read this book with my friend, Allie, of Allison. She used to be Allison Murfitt. Um, her new last name is escaping me. Wadsworth. She's Allison Wadsworth now. I will link her below. She is one of my best booktube friends on here. I love her. She's awesome. So you need to go check her out because she's hilarious. And yeah. So yeah, we read this one together and we had heard really great things about it because everybody seems to, to love it. It was just okay for me. It's got a really cool world. It's about this place where there are a million souls and these million souls are reincarnated year after year after year. So they're put into different bodies but they're essentially the same people. And we are with a girl named Anna who in this world is a new soul. She she's really not supposed to have been born. She kind of she took the place of someone else's soul. And so the people in this world kind of fear her, kind of hate her because they're afraid that what happened to their friend when Anna took over could happen with them, that they could, you know, disappear and die and whatever. And so we're with Anna who has been raised by a mother who kind of hates her and treats her badly and she decides to leave and journey to the big city, the city where everybody lives. And while on the way there she meets this guy and they kind of have something. I don't know what they have. But yeah, it's it's all about that and the world is pretty interesting because it's almost like fantasy. There's dragons, there's these things called sylphs, which are scary. And the, the town is really weird because these buildings and this town has been there before anybody even came there. Um, the Million Souls did not build this town, it was just there. So it was interesting to read, but in the end it was just an average read for me, and that was mostly because Anna is annoying. Um, and then she has this hot and cold relationship with this guy who's really only out to help her. And yeah, she just, she blows up and it's Anna that brings it down for me. Um, I'll, I might continue, I'm gonna continue on with the series just to see where it goes, but that book did not live up to the hype that surrounded it. And the next book that I read was Fire and Ash by Jonathan Mayberry. This is the fourth book in the Rot and Ruin series, and it is the final book. So, I finished a series in September. Oh, oh, oh. You, yeah, that is an accomplishment. Well, for those of you that don't know what Rot and Ruin is about, it's about Benny Amura and his friends. They live in this world plagued by zombies, and they gotta survive and do stuff. And so in this last book, we find out all the stuff, and we hope for a happy ending. But what is actually really cool in this book is if you've read Jonathan Mayberry's adult series, Patient Zero, he has this character named Joe Ledger who is manly man, tough, he's going to save the world. And Joe Ledger is very prominent in Fire and Ash, which I found kind of cool because it's like merging the two series kind of. You know, you're getting a character from another series and he's coming into this world and it, I like that. I enjoyed the book. It had a lot of action. It had the scary reapers who were scary and kill everybody. And as for an ending to a series, um, I almost thought it was too neat, too um, happy. 
there are tragedies, but it's not anybody super important that dies. So, I completely forgot because I am an idiot. So I ended up giving Incarnate by Jody Meadows a 3 out of 5. And for Fire and Ash, I gave a 4 out of 5. Because it is one of my really favorite series that I love. The next book that I read was These Broken Stars by Megan Spooner and Amy Kaufman. This is like a Titanic in space. Where the ship crash crashes and a rich girl and kind of a poor boy are stranded on this deserted planet and they have to survive. And can I just tell you guys, uh, I love this one. It got a 5 out of 5 for me. It was so good. I really liked the love story between Lilac and Tarver. Um, it's not insta-love. It's like they work for a relationship, which I loved. And I love the survival aspect of it because I love those kind of things. And the mystery was really cool. I was intrigued by the mystery. There were tons of twists and turns. It was just, it was good. I highly recommend it. I've come to realize I really like space books, which who knew? Who knew? So that one was great. And then the last book that I read in September was Plagued, uh, the Mid-America Zombie Half-Breed Experiment by Better Hero Army. And I was actually sent this book for review, so thank you, Better Hero Army. It's about zombies. I love zombies. I love them. And this is a short little thing. It's like a novella, kind of. And we are in this world where zombies are a thing that you have to deal with, and we are with these two brothers who go every year to this zombie outpost town, kind of, in order to find out about their sister who disappeared on the day of the outbreak. And they're pretty sure that she's a zombie, but their family needs closure, so they need to find her. And while they're there looking for evidence, zombies escape, mayhem ensues, the brothers get separated, and they... The brother that gets separated has to survive and find his way back, and that's who we're with. And the reason it's called Zombie Half-Breed Experiment is because there is a half-breed zombie who plays a pretty important part in the story. The main character's kind of fascinated with her. She's not human, but she's not zombie. So, what is she? I don't know. But I really enjoyed that one. I ended up giving it a three and a half out of five. It was very quick read, um, full of zombies. It was fun. So that was all I read for September. Now on to October. October, the first book that I read in October was Her Dark Curiosity by Megan Shepard. Now this is the sequel to The Madman's Daughter, which I read last year, I think. I don't know. But I loved that one. And I love this one too. I gave it a four and a half out of five. Back with Juliet. Uh, she's made it to London. Um, and murders are going on in London. And she kind of has to figure out who's doing it and stop them. It's a great series. It's very gothic. It's very creepy. And I love it. And I can't wait for the third book to come out. And I think it comes out in January. And each book kind of has a retelling aspect to it or it's based upon a classic story. So The Madman's Daughter was based on, I think it's called Dr. Moreau's Island or something. I'm not sure. The Her Dark Curiosity was based on Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and then the third book is going to have like a Frankenstein aspect to it. So yeah, it's a great series. You guys need to check it out because it is awesome and I love it. The next book, that, well the next two books that I read in October really are combined because they're part of a series. And the reason that I picked up these two books was because of my love for these broken stars and I wanted to see if the authors had any other works that they had written because I loved these broken stars so much. So lucky me, Megan Spooner does have a series that is out now that she has written and I think it's completed. But I read the first two books in the series. I read Skylark and Shadowlark. They're kind of like, they're, they kind of have the same kind of feel. They're survival books. It's about this girl named Lark. I really can't remember her name. This is sad. 
but she lives in this city where they have this wall around the whole city to keep out the badness of the wilderness because their world has been like destroyed by magic or something I'm not really sure but each year children are taken and harvested for their magic and Lark hasn't been harvested yet and she's like 16 which is really old for someone not to have been harvested so she's taken into the Institute and she finds out that she's a renewable and that's not good because it means that the Institute can keep you and just harvest you over and over and over again because uh, your magic will renew itself and harvesting is painful it's not fun so Lark escapes and she is out to find other people like her survivors kind of um, and find her brother who disappeared earlier so that's the first book and I ended up giving both of the books a three out of five um, the first book, I just, I, it didn't have the same magic as These Broken Stars did, so it kind of disappointed me in that aspect. I found the world kind of weird, just because there's, like, magic everywhere, and magic makes things do strange things. Yeah. Uh, the second book, Shadow Lark, was slightly better. You no, know, it was better than the first book to me. I, I enjoyed it more because Lark finds herself in this city called... Leith, and she kind of joins this resistance kind of group and yeah I I do enjoy I do enjoy the series I'll probably finish it one day it just it didn't live up to the awesomeness that these broken stars was which was a little sad um there is an interesting guy in the series though that I like that Lark needs to to be nicer to his name is Oren and he has some secrets that make him interesting so yeah, and then the last book that I read in October, favorite too, it was Altered by Jennifer Rush. I gave this book a 4 out of 5. It's about this girl, her dad's a scientist, they live in this farmhouse, and in her basement are four hot guys that have been like experimented on, and they're kind of, they're kind of trapped down there in her father's basement for reasons that we don't know. Whatever agency is responsible for these boys comes to pick them up and an escape happens and our main character, Anna, I think that's her name, Anna, yeah, she goes on the run with these boys. And she kind of has a thing for one of the boys, Sam. He's like dark, mysterious, serious, you know. And yeah, they find out lots of stuff. I, the reason I love this book is because, one, it is so quick. And it plays out like an action movie. If you love action movies, go read that book because absolutely awesome. I loved it. So yeah, those are the books that I read in September and October. And now I'm going to tell you my plans for reading in November. Um, as of right now, it's going a little slowly just because of the first book that I'm reading. I guess I, I didn't expect the first book to take this long. And this book has already been mentioned in another video. But it is The House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danielowski. Um, it's about this house, this weird house, where it's bigger on the inside than it is on the outside, and there might be something, a presence living in the house. Not a ghost, but something that growls and might tear up stuff. I'm on page 264. It's alright. That's what I'm saying right now. It, it kind of had, this book kind of has a cult following. Um, a lot of people love it, and I've, I'd heard about it on BookTube, which is why I looked out for it and picked it up. Uh, but it's very stylistically written. Like, just for example, I'll show you some, one of the most stylistically, yes. See that? There's writing everywhere. And... The style is kind of hampering my enjoyment of the book. But yeah, I'm reading this. I really plan to finish this hopefully sooner rather than later. It has been just taking me so long to read just because it's huge. After that, I really want to read Thornhill by Kathleen Peacock. This is a sequel to Hemlock, which I really, really enjoyed. It's about werewolves and yeah... YA werewolves. You gotta love it. Then I would like to read Battle Royale by... Kushan Takami. I've heard about this book. It is like The Hunger Games, except this came out before The Hunger Games, I think. But it's about 
these Japanese kids who are taken to this deserted island where they have to fight to the death until only one survives. So I'm interested. Interested. Then I'm going to read Erased by Jennifer Rush. This is the sequel to Altered, which shows you how much I liked it because I went right for the sequel. Um, the only disappointment is uh, it's so short, which is sad. It's only, it's barely 300 pages. No, it's not even 300 pages. It's 275 pages, which, oh, oh, I want more. And then the last one that I'm going to try to read in um, November is Revelation by J.A. Souders. Now, this is the sequel to Renegade, which I read not that long ago, which is about like an underwater city kind of thing, except in this one, I think the girl has escaped and she's topside now. So that is what I plan to read. Whoopsie. That's what I plan to read for November and everything that I read in September and October I talked about. If you have read any of these books, tell me what you thought of them. If you've read any of the books I mentioned, tell me what you thought because I'm always interested in knowing. And I will see you guys later. Bye!